This is Jill. This is Jack. This is rape. This is not rape. When a man physically forces Jill to have sex, we consider it rape. But when Jill physically forces Jack to have sex, we don't consider it rape. Mary Koss agrees. Mary Koss is the feminist researcher behind the factoid that one in four women will be raped in her lifetime. In Mary Koss's original survey, only one in 16 women said yes to have you been raped. So how did she get her one in four number? By asking women, have you ever been physically forced to have sex or have had sex under the influence of drugs or alcohol? Disregarding the women's answers to, have you been raped, Mary Koss went on to publish her findings and one in four became an oft-repeated feminist talking point. Unfortunately, Mary Koss encountered an additional problem. When women and men are asked if they were raped, the number of male victims is low. But when women and men are asked if they were physically forced to have sex, the number of male victims skyrockets. On her efforts to correct the problem of too many men saying yes to have you been physically forced to have sex, Mary Koss says the following, quote, we work diligently to develop item wording that captured men's sense of pressure to have sex and draw their responses into an appropriate category of coercion instead of rape, end quote. Based on Mary Koss's advice, the Center of Disease Control decided to separate physically forced sex into two categories in their nationwide U.S. study of sexual and domestic violence. This is rape. This is made to penetrate. They then went on to publicize their findings on rape while excluding the majority of male victims of physically forced sex. When we reclassify made to penetrate as rape, we see the problem that Mary Koss and the Center of Disease Control were facing. They had found that men and women report equal levels of victimization in the past year. Jack is equally likely to experience physically forced sex as Jill in the past 12 months. However, the CDC found that only 20% of the victims who reported being physically forced into sex in their lifetime were male. Why is this? When witnessing two criminals, one female and one male, who are both equally violent, witnesses misremember the violence of the female over time. The force she uses is remembered as being less relative to the male. The witness's perception of her violence is whittled away. The same process is happening with male rape victims. Over time, they are bringing their memories in line with the dominant narrative shared by Mary Koss, the Center of Disease Control, and likely you. This is rape. This is not rape. So when you ask, did someone physically force you to have sex with them in the last year, Equal numbers of men and women respond yes. When you ask, did someone physically force you to have sex with them in the last five years, the percentage of male victims drops from 50 to 30. And when you ask, did someone physically force you to have sex with them in your lifetime, the percentage of male victims drops again to 20. Over time, male victims are misremembering the violence used against them by female rapists. Feminists will often assert that 90% of rape victims are female and 99% of rapists are male. Considering that this is universally seen as rape and that this is not commonly seen as rape, it makes sense that the majority of male victims and the majority of female sexual aggressors are excluded from statistics regarding rape. But what's really remarkable is that as much as 10% of male rape victims remain to be counted, and that despite being categorically excluded, women count for even 1% of rapists. Feminists are creating a false perception of female victimhood. They are creating a culture of fear targeted at women. They are maintaining the idea that men act and women are acted upon. 
that this is fundamentally different than this. Wouldn't it be better if we stop playing games with people's lives and recognize that this is not fundamentally different from this and that all victims of sexual violence, including Jack, deserve equal compassion? Regarding the uh, male respondents reporting being faced to, forced to penetrate, well, I didn't really give um, a very clear reason why that was treated differently than when a, a female is forcibly penetrated. Uh, do you have some explanation on that? The, I mean, the reports define the, the made to penetrate um, variable, like it's in the 2010 report as well. Um, there's a box that kind of describes how those variables were measured in this list. Well, it, what it does is it just basically says that that was excluded from the de definition of rape. Rape is, um, is there is a, there is a definition of rape, and it's a, a separate form of victimization than the made to penetrate. And it, if you look at the um, published reports, it defines, it shows how the rape was defined and how made to penetrate was defined. And these are also um, in line <clears throat> with the um, CDC uniform, um, you know, definitions for sexual violence. And, but uh, what was the criteria for deciding that being made to penetrate wasn't rape, whereas being forcibly penetrated was? As I said, they're, they describe um, how they were measured, and for more, you know, sort of background information uh, in the field on how um, the different definitions of rape and, you know, uh, actually, we're the first survey to actually include this um, made to penetrate. Um, but you can sort of, there's experts and processes from all over the country going back several years in terms of trying to get um, you know, ideas of how to uh, measure these constructs and surveys, and that's why we do go with, uh, you know, all the behaviorally intended, uh, behaviorally specific victimization um, questions. And, uh, you know, that we measured several types of sexual violence victimization um, in the in the sur in the survey, based on those victimization, those very specific, there's like 60 different victimization <laughs> questions we ask. 